Yeah, um, you need to have a go on virtual reality. I mean, yeah, I mentioned Jewel. I mean, I've not seen what she's done, but you can just imagine. You can just imagine what you can do. You know, if you the idea of no, nice to meet you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, you know, the the idea of an album being a visual experience as well, con controlled by the artist. It could be hit and miss for me. Like, you know, a music video can ruin a great song, yeah. or vice versa. You know, well, not vice versa. If it's a great song and a great video, that's so rare, so rare. Um, so you know, it's like anything. The, the potential is there. Whether you know, not everything's going to be automatically brilliant because of the process. But I'm hoping Bjork's. I love Bjork. I'm not really listening to her for a while, but she's you know got enough of that sort of creative personality to really make something like that work. Yeah. And she's always been quite digital and abstract and. But um, I'm, I'm not sure where, how the best way to get a go on VR is. Um, just keep your ear out because there, there will be like, I really recommend it because it's just mind blowing the first time you get in there. And especially if you do, well, not especially, I'm sure shooting some pieces of fun, I'm not some but, but like creating with like these two sort of joysticks is just. just What's incredible. it like with glasses? Because me, you wear glasses. Oh, yeah, does, it, yeah. does it fit all yeah, the glasses? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you just go like that. Oh, cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, I was going to ask, can. So using uh, a 3D printer is mm. really expensive yeah. and there's students who can't really afford it. Could you recommend any any sort of substitutes to get that sort of style of outcome? Because that's something that's about the, white, the white one near us as opposed to the cardboard ones at the back. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> the latter has an easy answer. Easy. I would... Well, I think, A, your first, first... If you want something on that level, you're gonna, and you want really low cost, you've got to outsource, you've got to find a print company that are doing it. You have to print small, you know, it's, you have to work with it. If you want something with that complexity, how solid that is, the finish of that, it's, it's gonna be a lot. But if you go, if you go small and you use a slightly less resolution uh, process, you, you know, and I think that where it's at now, you're gonna have to pay something to have something that complex. Um, but, I mean, we're in an age now of online services and anyone who's got a 3D printer, not anyone, but a lot of people have 3D printers out, out you know, sell out their service. And you can probably get a really good deal that way as opposed to going to a company. Yeah, that's a good point. Do you know, like somebody who's just got one, make friends with them, like, get them interested in the idea. They could, they could you know, find it, see it as a collaborative thing, yeah. put a shout out on yeah. social media, uh -huh. you know, sell your idea and then does it, do any 3D printers want to... You know that my whole career has been. This is probably useful for you guys. It's just been, you know, nothing happened. You have just asking. You, yeah. You 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 have an idea and you have to ask people to support it. Simple as that. So that my first exhibition out of university. Um, well, actually, I got I got invite. I got a little, little invite. Said, Would you like to exhibit at the gallery? Which was very lucky. But then, I was like, well, yeah. But I don't know money and went to, you know then it was about asking the questions will you support it got the printers to support it a little bit and gave me a reduction and then it was the first time I even understood how the Arts Council works and I went straight to them and I got like a thousand for my first you know and that, it was just that thing and well now there's uh, crowdfunding you know there's different ways yeah, to skin yeah. a cat but you know they don't have to be 50,000 pound crowdfunding projects they could be 100 pounds to get a 3D print off the ground and, yeah. and actually that in itself could be a really good process. I know there's a, one of the one of the people who've done really well on crowdfunding, I think it was on Kickstarter, was a guy who did, who did 3D printing and he, you know, I, I know how it was done and like, it was kind of simple to me, and, but he, he, he hit the zeitgeist, he did a skull that was, that was made out of a floral pattern, He's, he made god knows how much from a, a really simple idea, you know, and then everyone wanted one. So, it depends on your motivations. I mean, I think we all, all the artists here, we kind of want sort of a level of success that we don't have, but equally, we're very wary of it because uh, the, the struggle is what makes it all real. <laughs> That's what we keep telling myself for like 20 years. The struggle is what makes it real. But, um, yeah. Yeah. I think there's more questions. Thank you very much. Oh, no, thanks for I coming. It. I'm glad you did. Cheers. Any thoughts on sort of space and sound and their relationship, just in general? Space. Um, <laughs> it's a bit. Vague. It's less my. I've worked with yeah. sound artists a lot, but it, but as a as a collaborative thing, mm. um, I don't think I'm the right person to 
to give you a view on space and sound and arcs. It's not really, it's not really mine. Oh, right, yes. Actually, Polish, remember, I don't know if you remember on Saturday when we were yeah. setting up, I said I, I did a 3D one, but it was yeah. in 2010. Mm. And it looks colour wise like this one in the middle. The white one, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I can see almost like what I call a grain. Mm. Because it's a build up of the lines of mm. the plastic or whatever it is, mm. building up to create the structure. Mm. I'm just wondering whether or not I could polish mine, because I, I haven't seen anything polished before. That, um, so. The black one there, I mean, they, uh, that was made going way back quite a bit now, so I'm, I'm going to struggle to remember all the details, but it was, uh, what they did, I think they sandblasted, or an equivalent of a sand, for the black pieces, and that's yeah. before they were all put together, and that gave it a smoothness. I remember going in, and a, a very important meeting with the rapid prototyping company, choosing a finish, it was like, look, it was like choosing, you know, it was like choosing wallpaper, basically, and I was like, oh, I'll go, I'll go for the black one with sparkly... Cosmic <laughs> specs in it, please. That was, and it was just such a nice pro. I mean, it's so alien to have it normally just making everything by your hand to kind of literally choose swatches and stuff. But because my piece was like that big in four pieces, mm. and, and then I went back to Animal, I pulled it apart, and used it as a mold of clay. Oh, no, <laughs> that's interesting. And then now that's I'm interesting. thinking because it's just I've wrecked it basically, so it initially yeah, it was pristine because yeah. they do have this kind of pristine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. to them, really. And so now I've kind of put red clay in, I've put grey clay in. And bow grease. And bow grease, isn't it? It looks kind of Got awful now. Get but if I can actually kind of put it all together and have it polished. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I, I bought, um, for, for the purposes of the small prints, and I, I've just been sort of accepting rough edge, but I, I got, um, what's it called? Ro a rotary tool. Yeah. Uh, it's a simple tool, but it's a great it's a great thing, so you've got like, uh, where did I get mine from? Uh, I think it was Maplin's, they did, yeah. and it was like 20 quid or something, and, and you've got like all these different ends for buffering, and, and, and it works really well with, yeah. with the 3D print stuff, just to give it, give it a nice, and it'll probably get rid of a load of that clay, and yeah. so it might, might be worth thinking first, some yeah. sort of quite I mean, manual hands-on. When, when, when I did it for my degree show in 2010, mm. and basically, at the time, Oh, right, yeah. Without any labour costs or anything, it's only done at Fab Lab. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, down in Manchester at the time, they've moved since then. Yeah. And they did it for free for me, but I had to pay for the materials. Oh, and okay, the material yeah. cost was about £400. Yeah. Um, and so I've, I've kind of edged away from doing anything to it. Yeah. Because I think it was £400. But no, because I've pulled it apart <laughs> and everything else. I'm thinking I just might as well do something yeah, else. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have a play. What do you think about plaster? Using plaster as a material? Have you used it before? I don't think I have. Have you? you, you no, no, I've never plaster. I've no. never used plaster. It's clear. Yeah, because I'm, I'm using plaster at the moment and it's it's really hard to work with because you have to think about it's filling negative space, so you have to get yeah. the cast, the moulds together first. And I'm trying to make large sculptures like mesh mm. out of plaster, but I don't know how I'd do it because you have to have a massive cast. I came across a guy in the mm. fruit cycle. Mm. And I don't know how he was doing it, but he was tracking apparently where the force was in the room and creating these shapes to do with the force. Yeah. Um, but he was using, I think he was possessed about metal, putting metal in. And he, was, he wasn't using metal because that rusts and creates an effect on the plaster. He was using something like horsehair um, in the 
learn something else. Mm. Um, what, what kind of things are you making? What kind of sculptures? I'm looking at uh, this guy called Chris Martin who's done, he looks at classical sculptures and he takes parts out of them to make them more abstract. Like there's Sort of like that. Yeah, it is, it's yeah. a lot like that. Yeah. Um, like he's done one, I can't pronounce the name, but it's when, uh, you know the Trojan horse? Mm. There was a story about a, a guy who was who betrayed the Trojans and told the Greeks about the David's trap. Mm. And it's a sculpture of him and his sons being killed by serpents. But what he did was he took the serpents out. So it's quite, it becomes, and I've read this somewhere, but it's like they're, they're fighting death itself rather than the serpents. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's something I'm looking at at the moment. And is there a reason why you specifically want to use plaster? Or? Never used it before. Because okay. I've... And um, accessible. Yeah, it's, it's cheap. cheap. It's cheap, yeah. The college yeah. provide it. As long as you're making small stuff, it's free, so... But you want to make something big, so... It's quite organic as well, plaster, I think. Mm. Yeah. It's in gypsum, isn't it? Which is a, it's a natural, a naturally kind of... Um, is it? I think so, yeah. Mm. I haven't told totally. <laughs> But may, maybe you need to look at something else. Yeah. You need to go big, because yeah. I think you're right with plaster, you're going to have to make something bigger than the thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like a series of small casts and yeah, stack them Yeah, that sort of. Just do some maquettes and then decide which one it, you want to go yeah. big. Yeah. And then get somebody to commission and say, right, I'll have a bronze and then do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I've been thinking. Like, you know, make something small like this thing. Make mm-hmm. it small. Take a photo of it mm-hmm. so it looks massive. Yeah. Put the price on as if it's massive, and then when and it gets sold, get it made up really big. Yeah. But I, it's never going to happen to me. But you know, it's a, it's a nice thought. A nice I, thought. I don't make anything. My, my yeah. Everything will find its time. Yeah. Kind of, if you want to. Yeah. yeah. That's one of the things I've realised recently. I mean, it's different for you guys. You're young. Just be on it. On it. Mm. But like, you know, that you can't sort of beat yourself up about. Oh God, no. You know, where I've, I've got so many things I want to do. Am I motivated enough? Am I doing enough? Everything just falls into place when it's supposed to. You know, when the, an idea that can be sat in your head for ages, it just needs the right sort of place to, to exist, I guess. But it's good that you've been doing all the commissions and stuff. Uh, I suppose part of me can't be bothered. <laughs> Yeah, well, there's, that's yeah. a huge, that's a huge and thing. And it's like, if I'm, if I'm not exhibiting, if I'm not out there on Twitter and my website's not up and running, it's not perfect, mm. blah, 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 does that mean I'm not an artist anymore? I'll, I'll tell you one thing that is constant with artists, it, it's the, 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 the dialogue in your head that's always arguing. Am I this? Am I that? Why is he that? Mm. I got the, like the last uh, solo exhibition was at Z Arts in Manchester. And I finished it, and I was just exhaustion probably, but I was just like, oh, well, you know, me, me, me. What, what, you know, in the world of Instagram, where everyone's making images, what makes you so special that you've got to have a whole, you know, I was like, proper beating <laughs> myself up about it. But it, 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 these it's are questions that are valid. Though, it's, well. You know, like, well, why, why does your work need to exist in the public space? And there, there might be an answer for it, and I think I concluded that there, there was a reason, but it's... I mean, it's it is not. nice for people to see you work. I mean, yeah. I, I did my show in January, my masters, mm. um, oh, right, right, right. and it was really nice talking about the work. So you're not long out. No. no. Okay, chill. You know, <laughs> well, it, was of, it was good talking about it, and it was yeah. really nice having people who hadn't seen the work seeing it. I was yeah, quite surprised yeah, that yeah, people liked yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, I was quite shocked. I thought I'd got quite to like it. Mirrors in discs. No, I think an Emma has got to be a really what? intense process, Mirrors right? I think you, you, yeah, yeah, don't eat, you know, I mean, it's like when a big project finishes, just go. I'm so, I'm totally just inactive. <laughs> think, you know, think about something else for a while. Inertia for about, well, yeah. it's about three weeks after total inertia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm going to have to get out of the studio, you know what I mean? So that's going to get me Most, into action. Yeah, it's yeah, 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 yeah. A studio in Bolton. Okay. Part of, part of Bolton New Space is part of Castlefield Gallery, where they can allow you to have a studio space for free yeah but okay, it's nice. kind of only for a short period of time and the unit i'm in has been kind of 
uh, purchased by um, somebody who's turning it into a takeaway. Oh. Mm. So I've got to something like 16 vehicles to get out. Mm. But it's not been handy for me at Bolton. It's, it's not been easy to get yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not. You based? Not you based here? Yeah. I live in Shaw. So oh, okay. No way. Yeah. Okay. Probably when I was at uni, I did a space at Salford. Which again wasn't ideal. Prior to that, I had a studio at Third Floor next to Rogue. Mm. Um, And then prior to that, I had one at Cow Lane, which I liked as well. Mm. So I like having a studio space that I can go into and just breathe. Well, you, you guys, did you have like a studio space in your foundation course or not, yeah. re- not really? Not really. They don't give you anything. There's, um, there's n- no dedicated space for you. You just sort of do your work wherever right, you can yeah, and yeah. then put it away in a drawer or something. So it, really? Yeah. Well, you'll, you'll love getting to uni. Yeah. That was my, that was my favourite. Yeah. I didn't particularly get on with the course or my tutors, but space mm. and cheap materials, I was, that was all I needed. Yeah. It was brilliant. I didn't go somewhere, because I thought I wanted to go to somewhere in London, because mm. I like London. Mm. And I went I went for Cambridge instead, because you get like a ridiculous amount of studio space to use. Ah, nice. And I, like, I oh, you need the space for your sound installations, don't you? But it's it's just nice to have a yeah. proper space. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. at Goldsmiths, it was like, here's a space. Oh, <laughs> they rejected me at Goldsmiths. They rejected, yeah, yeah, reje- yeah. They rejected me like yeah. a couple of weeks ago, and I was like, well. They invited me to come on for an interview for the, the Masters, really last minute, and this guy was so, I can't even remember his name, he'd emailed me all weekend, please come along, um, I wanted to do it part time, come along and think about the full time and the space, come up on the full time. And when I actually arrived, um, the people who interviewed me, he wasn't there, he was in Berlin apparently, yeah. and they were so rude, mm. awful. Mm. They said something about Manchester and said, oh, are there any galleries in Manchester? And I was just like, oh. What? And I thought, do I really want to come here? No. Oh, so no, that's not, through. no, that's horrible, isn't it? It's like when I went to the degree show at the Slade in the summer, and I was like, no, nope, don't want to go here, because everyone was just really snooty. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. no. So, yeah, it's a tricky one, isn't it? I mean, they are, they are so hard to get into the London, those London places, but you probably a trade-off isn't there yeah you know. hardly any space yeah and i was talking to a student who was at goldsmiths at the time because he was showing um us around and there were only a couple of us with him mm. at the time. i wasn't impressed with the space at goldsmiths. No. and really? he said that the thing was they the space was made for way less people than there were on the course now and they just keep bringing up the number of people they take each yeah. year and, and you get less and less I mean, space you're basically walking around a parameter um so you're on the edges inside the building, so to speak, and I wasn't impressed with it at all. So I went back to the university where I did my degree, mm-hmm. and they gave kind of like bursary for um, having the first, they gave bursaries for um, being an ex-student at the, mm-hmm. so you got something like 25% off. So instead of costing, I think, £7,000 for part time, it came down to like four, mm-hmm. which took two years when you paid for it yourself. Mm. It's doable. Yeah. You know, yeah, you can do yeah, it yeah. in like the first five, six months and still get like five hundred installments mm. at the beginning of each. Um, mm. But then again I wouldn't recommend anyone to do it, really. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, art's I, one of the only things though, isn't it, where, yeah. where they say do have your masters. You know, every other subject they don't say, Oh yeah, masters but with art. You do I, do, I didn't do a masters. You didn't do yeah, a masters. I didn't feel I've not felt the need yet. I only felt the need because I'd been dragged off to teaching again. Oh, no, I'd, 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 I've wanted to, but it My just... My mum just did a master's because she'd been stuck teaching for a while. Um, she's a scientist, though. Yeah, it just <laughs> drains you doing the teaching mm. and you can't do your artwork, so I was like, no. I you, have to, you have to teach as much as art an arts master's as well, you have to teach. Um, I don't teach in art, I teach. Yeah. My first degree um, was in English and I did PGC. Uh, okay, I yeah, went yeah, back yeah. and did a visual arts degree in 2007 after mm. getting absolutely bored to death of teaching. <laughs> so, but I was actually teaching drama. Wow, well, there you go. It does. Uh, it's I've, good I've, to have bits of your life. That you yeah. go, I did that for a while. I had, a, I had, I my art stuff took me into theatre as well. Like, uh, you know, like there's um, horse and bamboo in Rotten Stall. There, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, you know, and I 
the art, they sort of got, you know, they were looking for visual artists to help with the workshops and stuff. And I was like, oh yeah, I'll come in and help you make masks and paint. Yeah. Before I knew it, I was running drama workshops with rooms full of young. Did you do any at half a green? <laughs> so, half a green. That name rings a bell. So this is a supplier.